Good morning everyone. Myself Subramanya Acharya. I am a second year postgraduate at Vaidehi Institute of Medical Science. Today I will be speaking on the topic neck spaces radio anatomy. The deep neck spaces are separated by the facial planes and the hyoid bone into the suprahyoid and the infrahyoid neck. There is continuation of some suprahyoid neck spaces into the infrahyoid neck space and continuation of some infrahyoid neck spaces into the superior mediastinum. The suprahyoid neck encompasses the deep spaces between the base of the skull and the hyoid bone, whereas the infrahyoid neck lies inferiorly between the hyoid bone and the clavicles. This is the hyoid bone which acts as a landmark and it divides the deep neck spaces into the suprahyoid and the infrahyoid compartment. And this is the section taken at the level of suprahyoid neck. Laterally, we have the masticator space space which is highlighted in purple here and posteriorly we have the parotid space which is highlighted in green here and anterior to the masticated space we have the buccal fat pad or the buccal space. So these three spaces are exclusive for the suprahyoid compartment. In the center we have this pharyngeal mucosal space which continues downwards and as the visceral space in the infrahyoid compartment. Posteriorly we have this perivertebral space which is divided into prevertebral and the paraspinal space. In the center we have this carotid space and medial to the carotid space we have parapharyngeal space. Coming to a section below this we have this visceral space which is nothing but the continuation of parapharyngeal space and on both sides we have this carotid space and posteriorly we have this perivertebral space and in between the perivertebral and the visceral space we have this retropharyngeal space and between the perivertebral space and the sternocleidal mastoid laterally we have this posterior cervical space which is better appreciated in this section. Before going into the details of each neck spaces let us have a brief idea about the cervical fascia. Basically the cervical fascia consists of superficial and deep fascia. Superficial fascia is just a thin layer of subcutaneous connective tissue that lies between the nervous of the skin and the investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Whereas the deep fascia encompasses the deep neck spaces and it is divided into the superficial or the investing layer of deep cervical fascia, middle or the visceral layer and the deep or perivertebral fascia. This is the superficial or the investing layer of deep cervical fascia which encloses the masticator and the parotid space and posteriorly it splits to enclose the trapezius and the sternocleidal mastoid muscles. The middle or the visceral layer of deep cervical fascia encloses the pharyngeal mucosal space and the visceral space in the infrahyoid compartment. Posteriorly, we have the deep or the perivertebral fascia which encloses the prevertebral and the paraspinous muscles. This is the axial section taken at the level of suprahyoid neck. Here we can appreciate the masticator space. And posterior to the masticator space we have this parotid space. In the middle we have this pharyngeal mucosal space which continues below as the visceral space and posteriorly we have this perivertebral space which splits anteriorly into the prevertebral compartment and posteriorly as the paraspinal compartment. And here we have the carotid space and in front of the carotid space is the para parapharyngeal space which has the fat as its component. This is the actual section taken at the level of oropharynx and in the center we have the pharyngeal mucosal space and posteriorly we have the perivertebral space and in between these two spaces 
we have the retropharyngeal and the digest space and laterally we have the posterior cervical space between the sternocleidomastoid and the periventricular space and here we can appreciate the parotid space consisting of parotid tail and here is the parotid space which continues from the suprahyoid to the infrahyoid coming to a section below at the level of infrahyoid neck we have in the center we have this visceral space which is the continuation of pharyngeal mucosal space it encompasses the pharynx hypopharynx thyroid and the parathyroid gland along with the thyroid and the along with the thyroid cartilage laterally on both sides we have this carotid space and posteriorly we have this perivertebral space and on both sides we can appreciate this posterior cervical space which has fat, fat as its component coming to the coronal section this is our masticator space here this is our temporalis muscle and this is our parotid space and in the anteriorly we have the submandibular space and the sublingual space which are better appreciated in coronal images only this is the sagittal image and here we can appreciate the middle layer of deep cervical fascia enclosing the retropharyngeal and the digestive space and posteriorly we have this perivertebral space with the paraspinal and the prevertebral space as its components here we have a tabular column showing different neck spaces at the level of suprahyoid and infrahyoid level the masticator space parotid space and the buccal space is exclusive for suprahyoid neck the pharyngeal mucosal space continues as the visceral space in the infrahyoid neck the posterior cervical space is seen at the level of oropharynx and the level, and at the level of infrahyoid neck the carotid space which receives contribution from all three layers of deep cervical fascia is seen at all levels now we will discuss in brief about each neck spaces masticator space the masticator space is exclusive for the suprahyoid neck level and it consists of the muscles of mastication ramus and body of mandible and the mandibular division of trigeminal nerve as its contents parotid space parotid space consists of parotid gland which has a superficial and deep lobe and it has external carotid artery retromandibular vein and uh, intraparotid lymph nodes as its content the intraparotid facial nerve traverses between the superficial lobe and the deep lobe of parotid gland next we have the parapharyngeal space it is shaped like a pyramid inverted with its base at the skull base and apex pointing inferiorly to the greater corner of the hyoid bone it contains fat as its main content and along with that it has internal maxillary artery ascending pharyngeal artery pterygoid venous plexus and lymph nodes it is located medial to the masticator space lateral to the pharyngeal mucosal space and anterior to the prevertebral space and posterior to the medial pterygoid muscle then we have the carotid space it has suprahyoid and infrahyoid components coming to the relations at the suprahyoid level we have the anteriorly we have the masticator space and the parapharyngeal space posteriorly we have the perivertebral space and medially is the retropharyngeal space and laterally we have the parotid space at the infrahyoid level anteriorly we have the anterior cervical space posteriorly is the perivertebral space medially is located is the retropharyngeal and the visceral space and laterally we have the posterior cervical space coming to the contents of the carotid space at the suprahyoid level we have internal carotid artery internal jugular vein cranial nerves 9 10 11 and 12 along with that we have level 2 upper deep cervical lymph nodes as its content at the infrahyoid level we have internal and external carotid artery internal jugular vein vagus nerve and middle and deep cervical lymph nodes as its content however the simple the sympathetic plexus is the content of the carotid space at the suprahyoid level but it is not encased by the carotid sheath 
these are the diagrammatic representation of axial sections of keratid space at the level of suprahyoid and the infrahyoid neck. At the suprahyoid neck, we have the internal keratid artery, internal jugular vein, and 9, 10, 11, and 12 cranial nerves. Along with that, we have the sympathetic plexus, which is seen lying outside the keratid sheet. At the infrahyoid level, we have the common keratid artery, internal jugular vein, and the vagus nerve as its contents. Coming to other next spaces, that is the pharyngeal mucosal space. It is located between the fascia of pharyngeal constrictor muscles and the mucosal surface of nasopharynx, oropharynx, and hypopharynx. It contains adenoids, palatine tonsils, and lingual tonsils, minor salivary glands, superior and middle pharyngeal constrictor, and later valley palatine. The visceral space is a continuation of pharyngeal mucosal space and is a central tubular space extending from the hyoid to the mediastinum and is enclosed by middle layer of deep cervical fascia. The visceral space is confined and is unique to the infrahyoid neck region and it contains the viscera in the anterior aspect of the neck. It encloses larynx, trachea, hypopharynx, cervical esophagus, thyroid and the parathyroid glands. Retropharyngeal space. Retropharyngeal space is a midline deep compartment of the head and neck and contains largely of fatty areolar tissue and lymph nodes that drain pharynx, nose and the middle ear. It lies posterior to the pharynx and esophagus and extends from the base of the skull to the thoracocervical junction as the alar fascia attaches to the buccopharyngeal fascia. It contains fatty areolar fatty tissue and uh, retropharyngeal lymph nodes as its content. Next we have the danger space. It is located behind the two retropharyngeal space and extends from the skull base to the mediastinum. It is a potential spot for the spread of infection from the larynx to the mediastinum. Lastly, we have the perivertebral space. It is a soft tissue space lying posterior to the retropharyngeal space and danger space and is surrounded by prevertebral layer of deep cervical fascia and extends from skull base to the upper mediastinum. The deep cervical fascia Hence, a deep slip to the transverse process, which divides the space into prevertebral portion and the paraspinal portion. Coming to the approach for head and neck lesions, first, we should look for asymmetry, by which we can say at what level and at what site the lesion is located. Then, identify the epicenter and analyze the normal contents of that space and then think of a differential. Another important aspect to identify the epicenter of the lesion is to look for the displacement of the parapharyngeal space. Suppose if the mass is located at the parotid space, it displaces the pharyngeal fat anteromedially. Similarly, if the mass is located at the pharyngeal mucosal space, it displaces the pharyngeal fat anterolaterally. Similarly, if the mass is located in the masticator space, it displaces the pharyngeal fat posterior medially and if the mass is located at the keratid space it displaces the pharyngeal fat anteriorly and if the mass is located in the retropharyngeal or the danger space it displaces the pharyngeal fat fat anterior laterally so the three layers of the deep cervical fascia and the hyoid bone define the next spaces each with unique contents and pathology these spaces can be grouped into suprahyoid or infrahyoid with some spaces like the keratid and the retropharyngeal spaces spanning both levels and the displacement of the parapharyngeal fat can help in determining the site of origin of lesion. So these are my references.